Hey, what's up everybody? Hope you're having a good day. I have another collaboration tutorial with my friend Alessandro Boncio and he came up with this really fun technique. So here's what we're gonna create. This is a Spider-Man uh, web slinging animation and we're gonna be using the new tools in S26 like the rope simulation. All right, so we're using a mo spline to generate this. So I'm just gonna copy this and we'll go to a new scene and I'm gonna paste this in here. So this is the most spline that we're gonna be using. And let me just show you, if you haven't used the most spline, you can just hit Shift C and type in most spline. And this is what it's gonna look like uh, by default. And what we're gonna do is change it to turtle mode. And we're also gonna change it to grow on separate segments. And under here, we're also going to change the display to line. One thing we did do was change the code to add a little bit more branching. So I'm just gonna copy that and I'll put it on screen so you can copy it as well, but it's just adding a little bit more branching. All right, so if we go to uh, the values, we're gonna change a couple of these. The tropism, we're gonna bring that down so it's a more of a narrower growth. And then also the default angle, we're gonna tighten that up as well. And what we're gonna animate is the growth right here. So it goes from zero and it grows on and then it branches out. And I think we stopped right around 6.18 or something around here. So it just ends with this little branch here. So this will be the, uh, the base for our animation. And then what we did was we just went to frame five and we made a keyframe, went back to frame zero and made it at zero. And then over the course of five, keyframes, this most blind is gonna grow on, and that will be the web slinging. So the problem right here is that if we wanna use the new simulation tags, the rope one that's in S26, we need to pin the ends, and we can't do that unless we have a point mode. And we can't do that with most spline, we can't access the points. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna make this a spline, and then later on we're gonna come back to the most spline. So let's duplicate this by hitting Control and dragging. Let's turn off the most spline original, and let's go to the other one and hit C to make it editable. If you're in point mode, you can see the points, then you can go to your live selection, and and what I did was select all of the endpoints, and these are gonna be the ones that stick. So select all the endpoints, and then also select the source point right here. And I already did this, so I have a selection tag. You can easily create a selection tag by making your selection, and then going to select and store selection, and that'll make this selection tag. But we basically just need this selection so that we can set the points here. Let's right click on the spline now and go to simulation tags and rope. And if we hit rope, the first thing we're gonna do is change the bendiness to three. We're gonna change the stretchiness to one, the radius to one, and here's the important part is make sure that you fix your points with them selected. If we hit set, and then we go back to our model mode, you can see that they have purple on the ends and this source spline right here. And that means that we are all set up so that these will stick at the end. Now we just need connectors to make this look a little bit more like a web. So let's right click on that spline. Let's go to simulation tags and let's go to connector, which is also part of this new system. All right, so under the connector, we're going to uh, make sure that we turn on same object and let's update live so we can see what's going on here. And let's increase the search radius a bit. So we're finding connections here and we can increase the max connections, maybe to 20 or so. All right, so now it's going to connect between these and make it sort of a web animation. Let's change the stretchiness to five and the target length to five and let's hit play to see what it looks like and we should have a nice web animation right here. All right, so one thing you'll notice is that it is bouncing up and down and we would wanna play around with the dynamic settings of that. And to do that, we can just hit Control D to get to our project settings. Now the previous dynamic settings are now called bullet. So everything like your dynamics, tags, your rigid body colliders, all those are in part of the bullet system now. And the new simulation system is for the rope and the cloth dynamics. So this is the new tab that will control all the gravity and all the settings for that. So what we can do is play around with these settings to get a little bit less of this bouncing animation. We can uh, maybe change the smoothing iterations to one and that will smooth it way down. And you can play with some of these uh, different iterations or sub steps to make things a little more accurate. But something like that should work pretty good. All right, so we have this spline set up, but we don't have it growing on like that most spline did. It's just static and then it's on. There's nothing growing on. So we want to figure out how to get these tags onto the most spline. And once we've set them all up, because all the points are the exact same spot as this most spline, it's as easy as just grabbing these tags and dragging them while holding control down to here to copy them. 
All right, now we can turn this most line on and we can turn that spline off. Make sure that you leave this checked on, but you can turn these two off. All right, so now the dynamics is starting at frame zero, but we actually want this most blind to grow onto frame five, and then we want the dynamics to take over. And we're gonna do that in the settings again by hitting control D. So if you go to simulation, we can go to um, the document frame range. Let's check that off. And let's make this start frame six, because then uh, frames one through five, it'll be growing on, and then on frame six, the dynamic simulation will take over. And now let's see what that looks like. So now you can see that it's growing on and then it's exploding. Now the reason it's exploding, it seems to be a bit of a bug. So I found that if you go to this tag here and you go to other objects, if you uncheck that while you're playing your simulation and then you check it back on, sometimes it'll fix itself. And if it doesn't, sometimes you'll have to go to the other tag and turn that one off as it's playing and then turn it back on and see if that works. And now you can see that it works. So it's just a bit of a bug that you can kind of fix. All right, speaking of bugs, if you look at the end of these, you can see that there's some weird missing connections and things just are rotating strangely. And the reason is if you hit control D, if you look at the elements that are being affected in this simulation, it only has our three. It doesn't have that last connector. And this connector right here, if we wanna hit control D and drag it in, for some reason it won't let me. Uh, so I did find a workaround. Instead of using the default attributes, we can actually add a different simulation object. So if you hit Shift and C, if you type in simulation, there is now a new simulation scene. And this is just gonna give you a little bit more control over which uh, elements in your scene are being used. So what we can do is just drag in these elements that we want to have uh, this simulation. And now, because I added this scene, this last connector, for some reason, it now respects it. So then all we have to do is go into here and change that start frame back to six. And I think we had smoothing iterations at one. And besides that, I think everything else is the same. So we'll play this. And now you can see that on the end of these, they are actually connecting properly and it looks correct. So for some reason, the default scene settings don't work. But if you add a simulation scene and manually drag in all of your elements into here, all these tags, then it will work fine. That is the way to make a Spider-Man web sling, taking that most spline and having it grow on, and then having the rope simulation in S26 take over. I hope you all found that useful. Thanks for checking out the Pixel Lab. We'll talk to you next time. Ciao.